up guys. 7120 Case International. And I know the farmer that bought these two, there's two of them, there's another one across the road just like it. These things probably got 20,000 hours on them at least. I know they had seven or 8,000 when uh, Ralph sold them to this guy. And uh, I remember they bought these brand new when I was in high school. Uh, these are damn good old tractors, but I'm telling you, this one here. I went through the power shift on this one um, maybe five or six years ago, and I told him, I said, man, this is this is the last two raw for this one. He says, why? And I said, well, there's a shaft. I got the shaft in there, but where the, the, the input shaft, I think, is what it was on these power shifts. If it had a creeper transmission, the input shaft was different than the regular transmission. Well, the coupler and stuff, they're not available anymore through case anywhere. You can't get them. I mean, this went on for a, a good month looking for this part. Junkyards, salvage yards, I mean, all across the country, looked overseas and couldn't find one. There weren't very many of these creeper transmissions in these and uh, the splines are almost gone and, and I told him, I said, once them splines are stripped, it's probably finished. I mean, it's probably junk, both of them are. But that was four or five years ago and it's still going, so. Um, broken PTO shaft. And I've changed a ton of those on these things because these guys, I don't know, I don't know how these guys keep breaking them, but they keep breaking the PTOs in them. Here's our new shaft. It's been a while since I've changed one. Uh, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to do it yet because I had a special tool that I made with a plate and all thread that I did these all the time with. And the last one of these I did, I was in the old shop across town and I moved everything out. And when we, and somewhere in the process of moving, we misplaced that tool. I looked for it for hours yesterday trying to find it and couldn't find it. I don't know what happened to it, so I got to see if I can improvise and make this work without it. Well, we're going to start draining some oil out. Um, and, uh, yeah. After. All right, guys, we're going to pop the lines off. I got 15 gallons of oil drained out of it. thing is going to turn. Never fails. Hopefully I got enough drained out of her. Got to drill up on some blocks, trying to get most of the oil pointing towards the front of the tractor. Eventually I'll get it right.
Okay, I gotta remember there's two bolts you don't, two or three you don't pull out. They're holding the case half together. And I guess I'll just start zipping out. If you get to a short bolt, you know, you leave that one in there. Maybe it's the one with the 19 millimeter head. I would suppose so. <clears throat> this one's got a copper washer on it up here. This, both of these on the top got coppers on them. It's pretty dirty. I better lay a rag down and lay these bolts on. Okay. I'm trying to remember. I thought there were some pusher holes. Uh, the pusher holes are for to spread the case half. It's been a while. It's been about four or five years since I've done one. I used to do them all the time, but it's been a little while. gushing out of there. five gallons out of it. Never mind, it's slowing down. It's just oil that was in his housing. Pretty certain I got enough out of there. Look at that flat face o-ring seal that was on the... Huh. Not one on there, really? Okay, that one's stuck to that one. That would be one that was on there. That thing would have been leaking. I can't remember how heavy they are, but heavy enough. The best thing to do is get this kind of shit out of your way, especially when you're going back together with these. I'm gonna get a inch and an eighth. Take that off. Growly. Little man boy, you sure get wound up. I'm gonna whip everybody's ass. These poor old tractors here, they're just about out of living their usefulness. They've, they've got these poor old tractors beat pretty hard. Now, I've got 
can slide it straight out and not fight it. Uh, thing on because my tailgate's pretty dirty from hydraulic jobs and then the dirt sticks to it when you drive down a dirt road. Uh, the pressure washed it off last weekend. I guess I'll do it again on my Sunday off tomorrow. Oh, I don't have Sunday off. I gotta go meet a hay guy tomorrow. Find my transmission snap ring pliers. There, there's one pair of them. Those are, I don't like those very much. Uh, where are my good ones at? Too many red handled pliers in here. Can't distinguish what's what. I gotta figure out how to do this without that tool. Either that or I'm gonna have to make another one. I got some all thread and stuff in there. I might have to make another one today if I can't figure out how to do it without it. Got a pretty good project uh, here next week. Don't know if I'm probably won't video it. It's I got a friend of mine that went to high school with him, and he's really big time into the logging equipment thing, and does a lot of work for those loggers. And uh, he called me, and he's got a uh, he's got a feller buncher, uh, a feller buncher that fell over on its side and ruined the engine and the framework in there that holds the engine it bent it all up but he's got another machine for a parts machine that he's got a good engine in and um so and the framework so we're going to pull the engine on the on the temco off and off the one that rolled and then cut the framework out for the engine support and then cut the other one out, pull the other engine, and put it in the other one that rolled over and weld it all in and remount the engine. So it ought to be quite an inter little interesting project. Yeah, that's right. That splines into there. That's right. Okay, so what I want to do next is pull this loose, and I think that just pops into there if I remember right. If I remember right. Been a while. It's been a while. Okay, let's grab this 12 point socket set. I don't have enough room on my vi or on my bumper to hold all this stuff. it off and I'll be pissed because the sockets will just go everywhere. Get another rag. 
bag before the oil makes it over here. I was trying to kind of keep sopping it up as it drips out of there. Spacers or another snap ring? I don't remember. I'm just going off memory. I just, and my memory ain't worth a shit, so. The needle bearing, I remember that. Now I remember it anyway. I think it's pretty tight fit if I remember right in there. If I can get this bar up under there or not, it can happen. If I remember, it's a pretty snug fit in there. Let's see if we can get us a cheap screwdriver and something. Get it wedged out of there. Yeah. And that should just unwind from the clutch pack. Right there. These are your PTO clutches right here. Okay. We have to compress this spring right here. That's where the tool comes in handy. Right there, that's where you need the tool. We gotta figure out another way to do it though. I've done it with C clamps before, but I don't know if a C clamp's big enough to go around that or not. short oh that oh, makes it a pain the way it stands but oh, I don't think that's gonna happen might have to go put it in the press I think I could probably put that in the press I do have some pipe cut with notches in them I could compress that with in the press. That's what I'll do. I don't need the tool necessarily. I can do it without the tool. I'll just put it in the press and compress the the snap ring here. I can actually and I'm wondering if I even really need do I need to really pull the frictions and stuff out of it? Well, let's do that. That ain't gonna be that big a deal. Might as well check them while we're here, huh? to admit it guys I kind of like wearing these gloves on for this kind of hydraulic nasty shit you know I kind of like wearing them bitch mittens <laughs> I like what Luke Reynolds called the bitch mittens that's what I used to always think of them too I uh, see evidence 
Oh, some slippage there. Golly, the teeth are wearing off on them. I don't know if we want to put this thing back. No. That one's slipping. The friction material is almost clear gone on it. No, I'm not putting this thing back together today. That's not going to happen. I'll get the shaft changed in it, but we're not putting them clutch packs back together the way they are. That's not going to happen. I'm not putting it back together like that. Look at the teeth. How the teeth are worn off on them really bad. The internal spline teeth. See how this one here, the first disc has been slipping. See where this one's burnt? See here, you can see you can see the silver material here. It's it's been slipping. It's worn out. This one here has been slipping on the other side of the disc. See where it's burnt on this side of it. Now the other ones, the teeth are worn off, but they haven't been slipping. All it takes is one. One disc to slip and you're screwed, man. But look how worn these are. Look how worn these teeth are. Let's see, I got a, that backhoe transmission that I rebuilt in here. I'll show you what the, the difference is between good teeth and bad teeth on an internal spline disc. Let's find a good well these this this backhoe is different. The disc the, the steel plates are actually internal splined. I mean, you can see the difference here. See how they're nice and kind of squared off there? They're round where the recess and the valleys are. Then they square off there. Look at these things. They're just absolutely worn out bad. So we cannot put it back together the way it is. Let's go put this back in here. We don't want to mix these parts up with those. We can get the shaft changed in it today though. So let me uh, try to remember. There's nothing out here that had to come apart. You do have to get this off. That's the way you got to get the clutch drum off there. And the, and the piston, so. I'm using the GoPro 5, and I can tell you what, the GoPro 7 sure picks up the low light conditions way better than the GoPro 5 does. As you can see, I've got this set up in the press. I'm trying to get this snap ring off of here now. And the problem I'm having is... get the right angle on it because I'm too close to the uh, what if I drop it down another notch put that long piece of pipe there and that'll give me more room between here and here and then maybe I can and then maybe I can get my snap ring pliers on there the way I need to get them on there this ain't working very good here yeah, they ain't working for shit. <sighs> well, I got it worked up on one side anyway. I yeah, got it, alright. another notch is what I should have done when we put it back together we're definitely gonna we'll take these down to the next hole that way I give myself some more fucking room there for that spring to expand all right okay it holding I don't remember 
that's just going to be the piston. You got to pop the piston out of it. Yeah. We're going to need air for that. I'm going to put some air into one of these ports and pop the piston out of it. And I'm sure there's some guy on here that does them every day that's going to tell me how wrong I'm doing it. That's okay. The last one I did was about five years ago. I don't remember. I'm can't remember shit like that anymore, I just can't. Alright. One of these ports. One of these will pop that out of there. snap ring, I gotta pull that snap ring out of there. Where oh where, where oh where. Snap ring pliers. and pull the drum off. That's right, there's a snap ring under here. Damn it. And there's a thrust washer right there. Now, we're finally getting down to where we can do something here. Now is where you split the case. Those two bolts that we left in before, now we'll pull them off. Steve's going to pick me up a gasket. I called the mechanic for him. He's in town and I doubt they're going to have it. We'll probably make a part two to this video because most of the time, guys, I mean, we probably should have planned ahead a little bit, but he just called me out of the blue and said, hey, I got a new PTO shaft for that tractor. Can you change it out? I said, sure. And then I got in the cat. He said, the parts are in the tractor. Well, the only thing in the tractor was the shaft. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, there's a little bit more to this. I mean, if I'm going to do this, I would get me, you know, I would be ready. I'd get my seals, get my two gaskets for the case splits and the one that mounts to the case of the tractor. And uh, kind of be ready to go, you know, instead of kind of this half-assed and just throwing a shaft in it and calling it good enough. I don't know. Let's go get a 19 millimeter. And they told me today, they said, we can't. Afford the, the 6170R, we're just going to put it back together the way it is. We just can't get the... The owner wanted the new part on that, and we're just going to have to say, the hell with it, put it back together the way it is. I don't know, the piece was coming from Germany, and now they say they can't track it, they don't know where it is, and it's a huge cluster. That's what it is. Huge cluster. I thought there was spreader bolts for these. There's some holes where you can mount a PTO shield on it, but there's no spreader holes. Let's get some of this stuff. We 
can put this 90% of the way back together with the exception of the frictions in the pack. You know, so. Let's get a little tapper. Well. Tap, tap, tapperoo. Okay. and that's going to be tight on them dowels right there. She's being a little bit stubborn. It's that one dowel over there, the one that's causing me problems. Yeah, this dowel's causing me some problems here. Thus washer here, you gotta make sure you get that back on there. The dust washer will go there with the bronze side up. And it's got a flat on it, it'll go in that notch right there. Okay. I don't remember if there was a snap ring that retained this or not in there. Seems like to me I had to pull. pull this idler here off. That's that gear there. There's your other bronze washer. I don't remember if that just. I mean, I remember that bearing being in there. I think I had to press that bearing off, and you took the snap ring out, and you had to go put this stub shaft in the press and press that bearing off then you had to beat it back in there oh, come on wobbly son of a gun certain today you guys seals ruined and, and I could put that seal in there I guess without I mean that really isn't that big of a deal I could put that seal in there with the shaft in it I've done them before 
numerous times. Stick the seal on there after I all right now that's right see you gotta you have to pull that out and then pull the snap ring press the bearing off it's a little bit of a job changing these not too bad though because it's already screwed up. We don't care what happens to it. Of grease come from. That's fucking nice. Huh? <laughs> I don't know where the hell I pressed something off that had grease in it and it oozed out onto the floor and now this fell in it. Now it's got grease all over it. Sometimes you can't make a omelet without breaking an egg. something. Okay. There is the inner race for that. There is a broken one. Broken. You broken it. You've broken. I don't need that so much anymore. Actually, we do. I need this. I need that. No, I don't need that. I'll go on there. on these types back on here brand new shaft you got there and that I don't like the way that snap ring looks kind of a little bit out around looking but sometimes a guy can take them and put them in the vise trying to get them round again Done so many of these when I was when these tractors were used all the time. In the potato years, I used to do them all the time out right out in the field, right out in the middle of the potato field. Uh, 
I think a lot of the viewers are used to working in these elaborate shops and maybe dealerships and things. And there's quite a few field mechanics on this channel too. But I think the guys that are always in the shop, they just can't believe what they're seeing. Just absolutely foreign to them. Having somebody do something out in the field and there's dirt around them. They just can't believe it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Really screwing with me. Starting to piss me off a little bit. <laughs> there he is. But the wrong guy. Using a screwdriver as a chisel and a punch, you damn right. And I'll go buy another one on that one screwed up. What do you think of that? Sometime you're still fussing around trying to find the right tool for the job, that'll all be onto the fourth project and be done. bit of an issue here. He's in a little crooked here. Let's get a real hammer. There we go. He's got a little sideways on his Oscar. He's still being ornery. Being a little ornery on his buddy. We'll be on right back to it. There we go. Work fine, last long time. Up in here. Yeah. Screw them, driver. set this thing up maybe somewhat kind of, it's, a, it's an awkward thing it really is Okay, now what a mine can do. That gasket still looks pretty good. Where's that gear there? Let's put that gear. How's the needle bearings looking at? They look pretty good. my fingers this one here will have to grease it and stick it on here 
I'm going to take a little anaerobic sealer and put it around here. I'll reuse this gasket. I've done it a hundred times before. I think I probably did it to this one. He's done this quite a few times that he'll get one of these that breaks a PTO shaft. I'll just drive out there and change the PTO in it, the shaft in it. That's all we get is the shaft. We're getting out of where we kind of probably need to start getting some more parts for it, you know, like the gaskets and the seals. And I can put that seal, I can slide it over the shaft and get it back in there with the shaft in it. Take that there washer and there you go. Alright guys, I'm going to get a little anaerobic sealant there and put on that. I'm going to find me a block of wood and put it right here and stand this up straight. Alright, we got some anaerobic sealant on there as a backup plan. So we're going to use this one gasket here. I called the owner, Steve there, and he said, well, I'll see. He said, but we really need the tractor, so put some, he said, put some silicone on there or something. Kind of backup plan, make sure she seals up. I said, okay, you the boss. Let's see here. I took it off like that, so it's going to go like something like that, maybe. Where's the big square part at? What am I looking at here? This way. I probably should put some on this side too, but I was just worried about that one side there a little bit because it had a little bit of a tear in that one gasket on the corner, which I don't think it's going to hurt it at all, to be honest with you. Let's put a little bit right in here over this. See the little tear right there? That's the biggest thing right there. Fill that gap in. Okay, let's tighten this up. So put this case half on there, it doesn't go to hell on me. Dumbass. Um, let's see here. I gotta go like this. What the hell am I got going on here? That goes right there. That thrust washer is gonna be right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm all screwed up. Ugh. I'm gonna go like this right here. This one. Let's get the end wrench and kind of cinch him up a little bit that way. How come he's using imperial wrenches on a metric bolt? Three quarter, nineteen millimeter. Pretty much the same thing. 
half inch 13 millimeter half inch is a go smaller I've used half inch on some bolts that were metric bolts that were partially rounded off to get them off before because they fit tighter 14 millimeter 9 sixteenths are fairly close 14 millimeters a little bit tighter but half inch and 19 millimeter are pretty much the same I can't believe the guy said that that he's never never done that I can't imagine how many hours of wasted man hours these guys spend on trivial stuff that doesn't mean shit you know it doesn't absolutely mean nothing part is together and I might just leave her in the vise now this gasket here is pretty oh, I don't look so great we can't put it together anyway because we gotta we can't put it together with the frictions I just wanted to get that part together um, How far can we go though? Let's see, we can go quite a ways, I guess. We can get the clutch drum back on it. There's a couple of ceiling rings on this clutch drum, so look at those. They're Teflon ones. They're not split ones either. They're solid Teflon rings. Usually don't have any problems with those. The old metallic ones would wear and break on you, but... Okay. Just washer. persuasion here and see if we can so I've got the D7F coming my way pretty much I think so we just got to work on an agreement between the two of us and this guy's a very good man easy to deal with if you treat him right and be honest with him about things he's one of them guys that you don't lie to him about anything, you don't even, you know, you gotta be honest with him. And you should do that with everyone. <laughs> you shouldn't lie to anyone about anything. But, uh, anyways, he's a good dude. Is that cracked or scratched? It's scratched, I believe. Yeah, it's scratched. Okay. Piston seals look good on it. Slide the piston back in it. And we can put the return spring back on. All that good stuff. All the other stuff we can't do much about till we get some more parts. We can't put that shit back in there. It won't last long at all with that. Alright, I'm gonna go put it in the press again. 
press that back down, collapse it, and put the snap ring on. Well, let's see how we do here. Center it. Trying to get the light. center that thing a little bit. Get it to pop over this. Slide off on it just a touch. Oh come on now. Cooperate with me here guy. I had to hit these things and get them centered before with a hammer and tap on them to get them to pop over that. Get Oscar in there. Oscar, get her fixed in a hurry. Oscar, don't mess around. It means business. Oh, Oscar. Stubborn here. There it goes. Okay. Told you. What it takes sometimes. Get the damn thing to go on there right. And I did a brain fart and left my snap ring pliers outside. Dummy. Big dummy. I'll go eat some lunch and then I'll come back and clean that hitch and hitch valve and all that SCV stack up and put it back on that tractor. 6170R out there. the use of a screwdriver or something can we possibly tap that that way a little bit yeah get a screwdriver or something press the snap ring down in the back because it's wanting to curl up on me every time I press on it. That's all it took. Pretty certain she snapped down in there. Something don't quite seem exactly right, does it? It's in there. There it 
goes. All right. I'm just going to leave it right here, guys. PTO shaft's back. i got to put the seal in it. And we get the new frictions. Put all those back. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't need it on this press. We'll pack it over here and lay it on the... Uh, this plywood over here where I had the parts for this case back, though. Oh! Oh! Okay.